I wanted to cover an issue that's not talked about a lot in the capital community because it happens infrequently, and that's the lobbying of bill referrals. In other words, how does someone get a bill referred to a favorable committee or perhaps even an unfavorable committee or perhaps even to multiple committees? You know, in most instances, the policy committee to which a bill is going to be referred is relatively straightforward. For example, a bill amending the Code of Civil Procedure is most likely to be referred to the Judiciary Committee in either house. Same with a bill amending the Streets and Highways Codes is most often referred to the Transportation Committee in either the Senate or the Assembly. But sometimes you might want a bill referred to perhaps a friendlier committee um, or perhaps a hostile committee for something that is opposed. So this raises the question about how to get a bill referred by the respective rules committee of the Senate and the Assembly. Now, of course, there's no formal guidance in lobbying bill referrals. Uh, most lobbyists rarely engage in efforts uh, dealing with where is a bill to be referred or not to be referred. But, you know, those who are involved in this process obviously um, will talk to folks and um, hear out suggestions for where a bill or may not, for where a bill may or may not go. And if so, to perhaps more than one uh, committee even. So first, you got to look at the bill in detail, you know, what's what code is it in? Are there multiple codes being impacted? How many sections? Uh, are they new law being amended or repealed? Um, you know, what is the general subject matter or are there multiple subject matters covered by the particular bill? Policy committees, if you read the Senate rules, they specify the committee jurisdiction the Assembly Rules Committee adopts each two-year session uh, the jurisdictions of their policy committees and their subject matters. So, of course, you want to take a look um, at the different committees, and sometimes there is the potential for some overlap uh, in those. Now, based upon those subject matters that are covered by the committees of the Assembly and Senate, it's most likely where the bill's going to be referred, um, but ultimately that determination is up to the rules committee uh, in the two houses. Um, and of course, the assembly rules committee will make the first referral for an AB and the Senate rules committee for the first referral for an SB in their house of origin. And then obviously that's gonna get switched when the AB moves over to the Senate and the SB moves over to the assembly. And while what the house of origin does in terms of the referral may not be binding, and in fact is not binding on the other house's rules committee, but will probably give you a good idea. However, remember that there are 22 uh, standing committees in the Senate, but 33 standing committees in the assembly. And not all of the committees have the exact same jurisdiction, naturally. So you could have differences between the referrals between the Assembly and the Senate. Now, in both rules committees, um, there is a legislative staffer who's responsible for reading uh, all of those bills and their amendments and then recommending to their respective rules committees where those bills should be referred. Um, the Senate, of course, has five rules committee members uh, chaired by the president pro tem of the Senate. There's a chair and vice chair of the Senate Rules Committee as well as the assembly. And so you end up talking with both the staff and the members of the respective rules committees. And there's generally some coordination between the, the chairs and vice chairs offices. Now, in addition to their own review and analysis, the rules committee staff and looking where the bill should be referred, do work with the policy committee consultants in their respective houses in order to help make the correct bill referral determination. 
Now, ultimately, the decision's up to a majority of the respective rules committees, but in 99% of the referrals, they follow the chair's recommendations. Um, and usually in the vast majority, it's done unanimously by the two committees. But every once in a while, there are instances where, for example, the minority party would like a bill to be referred or not to be referred to a particular committee. Um, as a re, uh, result, you know, you've got to be in communication with not just the Rules Committee staff, but also the Senate Republican Caucus Rules Committee consultant, as well as the Assembly Republican Caucus Rules Committee consultant. And so you want to be in communication with both of them and get their uh, respective points of view. Now, sometimes referrals can be pretty controversial uh, because it might result in the bill having an easier time passing or a harder time in passing. And so sometimes there is active lobbying on bill referrals. Um, and so sometimes that is seen by uh, substitute motions, for example, being made in the rules committees. But ultimately, uh, these determinations are up to the rules committee uh, members on the advice and recommendations of their staff who look at everything from the subject matter to prior history on similar bills, uh, requests from committees, uh, and other such information. So there's not one single determining factor, but instead a multitude of different factors that go into determining which committee or committees a particular bill is going to be referred to in each house.